Brothers and sisters, good morning. Today, Pastor Jason will lead us to study the book of Proverbs, chapter 10. Chapter 10 is a new paragraph. First one to nine is about the advice of the Father. So chapter 10, it begins with the Proverbs of Solomon. So there are several paragraphs here. Starting from chapter 10 is a new paragraph. And then when it comes to chapter 30, this is the Proverbs of Argo. And chapter 31 is the sayings of, or the Proverbs of King Lemuel. Today, the title is, oh, there are, the title for today is, The Four Choices of Choosing Wisdom. Why a person has wisdom? Because in these four areas, he has chosen um, the right decisions. So these are the four areas which we have a lot of struggles with. I know this is important, but how about the other? Sometimes when we make choices, uh, it's quite contradictory. We want this and we also want that. So we, this is contradiction. So it's difficult to have both. But when we know how to choose, we can enter into wisdom. First one, the Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son grief to his mother. If you have wisdom, your parents will be happy. If you don't have wisdom, your parents will worry about you. Now we see that relationship is very important. The first choice is choose relationship. It is not self-righteousness. You know, when you make a choice, you will affect others or influence others. Chapter 9, Proverbs chapter 9. Verse 12, if you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are mocker, you alone will suffer. When we make many decisions, we have to bear the consequences. This is the way. But when we enter into Proverbs chapter 10, So you have to take note of others when you make a decision. If you have not made a wise decision, then you have to bear the consequence. And also you have to think about your parents. They will worry about you. Even your spouse, your family members will worry about you. So you have to think about others, not about yourself. So every decision we we'll make will influence others. So we have to make decision from um, the, the, the point of the angle of relationship. We must have wisdom. In all these relationship, you have to make your parents happy, bring joy to them. You make decisions and you highly regard relationship. In this way, you have wisdom. Verse 2. Ill-gotten treasures are of no value, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but 
He taught the craving of the wicked. Wisdom is to choose God, not about money. No, I'm, I'm not telling you that you, you should be poor. And I'm not saying that you should go and earn money only. When there is contra contradiction, when you do this, which contradicts God's heart or His will, let us not choose wealth or money, but to choose God. When there is contradiction, God should be the first. Choose God, but not money. Why? Ill-gotten treasures are of no value. Ill-gotten, it means there is problem here. It will hurt people. It is not using the right way. And this is not pleasing to God. If we do this, then we will not receive any help or any benefit. You think, oh, I can receive this benefit. But Proverbs tells us you must know how to let go. It's useless. This money not only not useful, but it will hurt you. Unless your whole being is righteous, is upright. You say, I really want this. I really want this ill-gotten treasures. Then we will become wicked. So, uh, but he who he towards the craving of the wicked, God will towards you, will hinder you. So we have to understand. Um, it's good to have money, but we have to use it in God's principle. The third sheer choice. We choose to be diligent, not to be lazy. Verse 4 and 5. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands brings wealth. Just now I mentioned that we choose God not about the money. Oh, you might think, oh, do I need to be poor in, in all my life? Is it that when I fear God, I will be in poverty? No. God has his way, has his principle of wealth. And this principle is be diligent. Do not be lazy. We must be diligent. Diligent brings wisdom. The diligent man will reign. Diligent man has authority. If we choose diligent, we have wisdom. And in different seasons we choose, we will do the right thing. Verse 5. He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Here we talk about choosing diligent. It's not choosing busy. Busy doesn't mean it's diligent. Being diligent is we focus um, to do the, the things well. So here uh, gives an example of um, gathering crops, growing. So we have the four different seasons, and we do different things in different seasons. You could be very busy, but when it's time for harvest, you didn't harvest. Maybe this is the season to sow uh, the seed, but you didn't do it. You say, I'm very busy. I have a lot of things to do. Right. But you're not being diligent in this way. You're not focused enough. 
In all things we do, we must be focused in order to have good result. We choose to be diligent. So we continue to work hard to do one thing. Yesterday, after I shared morning devotion, somebody told me an incident. He said, uh, Pastor Jason, I discovered that uh, it seems that we have not read through Proverbs 9. That means uh, uh, this brother went up on the internet and checked what we talk about Proverbs 9, but he said ne we never did it. Because chapter 9 seems to be blank to me. Yeah, when I read the Bible, um, I will write something on uh, in the Bible. But for chapter 9, I didn't write anything. It, it's blank. Sometimes I will write down my insight or the insight of Pastor Joshua. When this brother reminded me, he really studied the scriptures. He wants to find out how do we look at the scriptures in the past and also how do we look at it today. He's diligent. He continued to uh, study and work hard in the words of God. I have much feeling when I heard from this brother. Sometimes when I um, hear a morning devotion, I will notice uh, this chapter, how we talk about it in the past, and how about now? Some insights are being recorded in the past, but there are new insights from Pastor Joshua now. This is diligent. In one matter, we continue to focus on it. And this man has wisdom. And in verse 6 to 14, so wisdom is to guard our tongues and our lips and to guard our mind and thoughts. These two things seem to be the same or not. And what is stored up in our heart, we will speak it out. So our heart and our mind are connected together. When we deal with our mouth, with our lips, that is also deal with our mind. It could be the same then. The fourth important choice is we have to guard our words and our mouth. And we choose to deal with our heart. Because sometimes when we speak, then we will provoke others, and which makes us pay a high price. So the way we speak uh, would also influence others, would also, uh, and vice versa. That's why we need to spend um, our, our time and we, we have to do it with our heart in order to deal with our mouths, to deal with the hidden things inside our heart. Even though you speak beautifully, but we discover that uh, there is wickedness in our heart. That's why that we, our heart must be upright. Many people uh, will say, Pastor Ennern can speak really well, and I said the same. But she told me that it's not that I know how to speak words well, because my, of my heart, like my heart is upright. So I will say it out. So 
so sometimes、um, we will go round and round. How should I put my words? Or I should say it this way so that I would not hurt others. Or I say it in another way so that、um, for other people is、uh, good for them to listen. I will please them. And then the speed, the way we speak, will be slower. So whatever your heart thinks, or when your heart is upright, you just speak it out. It's not that we have、um, like we we're eloquent in our speech. That's why I said these two things are connected together. In order to be a wise man, we must deal with our mouth, deal with our hearts and our mind, our thoughts. Let's move on. Verse six: Blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. The righteous will receive blessing. But for the wicked, whatever their mouth speak, they have violence because they cheat others, they bully others, they don't follow the rules. Like these people, they want to overcome others. So the violent man,、uh, they don't follow the rules. That's why the righteous are blessed. The righteous are being remembered. Verse eight: The wise in heart accept commands. Accepting commands means, oh, when people give you advice, give you commands, immediately you do it. Because the heart is soft, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. That we just freely speak anything. How come you will just speak like a fool? Whatever you think, you speak it out. Then there will be problem. You just like to speak whatever you want to speak. You think this is pleasing to yourself, and this will bring a lot of problem to you. First nine, the man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. It's talk about our mind and our hearts, our thoughts. Uh, he who wings maliciously causes grief. First eleven, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but a violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. First twelve, hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers over all, all wrongs. It's about our minds, our set and our hearts. Wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning, and in verse fourteen. Wise men store up knowledge, but the mouth of a fool invites ruin. How can the wise men store up knowledge? Store up means、um, he can hide himself. Say、so、he sees something, but he will not speak it out immediately. He store it up. At the right time, he will release his words. That is to say,、uh, when he speak up, he will not speak it up so sweetly. So, a, at the right timing, he will tell others. So everyone feels that we stored up a lot of knowledge. We stored it. It's not just in a hurry, speak it out. It's not that he didn't know. He is afraid that other people might not think he is great. So some fool thinks that,、um, oh, my opinion is good. How come you don't listen? He really wants to speak. This brings about problem.
So when we deal with our mouths and words, it's not about the contents, but also the timing when we speak those words. So now, as we read on, it goes back to the main point we just discussed. Verse 15, the wealth of the rich is the fortified city. So it's talking about grasping wealth. We have to grab hold of God, but not wealth. Verse 16, the wages of the righteous bring them life. We have to be diligent, not lazy. Verse 17, he who heeds discipline shows the way to life, same as verse 8. That is, um, the wise in heart accepts commands. Verse 18, he who conceals his hatred has lying lips. Let's talk about our words of our mouth and mindset. Verse 19 to 21 continue to talk about our mouths and our words. Verse 19, when words are many, sin is not absent. But he who holds his tongue is wise. For those uh, whose words are not many, they have wisdom. Because the more we speak, there will be uh, loopholes. In fact, our heart is not that upright because uh, people's heart is deceitful about all things. So there are a lot of thoughts being stirred up in our heart. When we continue to speak and speak, then there might be a problem. Here we talk about the quantity of our words. Verse 20, the tongue of the righteous is choice silver. But the heart of the wicked is of little value. So it's about the quality of our words. Our words must be refined. Verse 21, the lips of the righteous nourish many. It's talking about the way we speak has influential power, which can help people. However, but fools die for the lack of judgment. His words hurt himself. Verse 22 to 25. Here talk about guarding our heart and our mind. Verse 22. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no trouble to it. Is my heart worried? We have to deal with it. Verse 23. A fool finds pleasure in evil conduct. But a man of understanding delights in wisdom. What is the root of my joy? Is it just I like to do whatever I want, but it's not pleasing to God? Or I like or I love wisdom? Verse 24, what the wicked dress will overtake him. For example, if I succeed in drug trafficking, then I will have a lot of money. Uh, I better not be uh, caught up. If you think this way, you will be caught. There is problem in his heart. Verse 25, when the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever because God will guard our heart. Verse 26, as vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is a slugger to those who sent him. We choose to be diligent. When you are lazy, you are not only hurting yourself, but you make those who sent you be very painful. So this is about relationship. Mm -hmm. 
if I'm a mocker, I have to bear the consequence. But my parents will worry about me. This is about relationship. If I'm lazy, I will be poor. But those who hire you will be painful. So we've done a lot of things. It's not for ourselves only. We will influence others. Verse 27. The fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. Verse 27 to 29 talked about choosing God, not money. Verse 30 to 32 talk about guarding our mouths and our words. So this chapter talked about how to become a wise man. We have to choose relationship. Do not just think about yourself, care about yourself. We have to take note of the feelings of others, especially our close ones, our parents, our spouse. We have to choose relationship. And then we choose God. When we choose God, we choose relationship. It's the same. So this is more clear, more specific. I have to choose God, choose relationship. I have to be diligent, should not be lazy. I must not be busy. I must be diligent. I have to deal with my mouth, deal with my heart. What about us? We love to grab hold of the things we see. Yes, money we can see. But I cannot see God. We love to grab hold of those things which are beneficial to us. But when a group of people want to grab hold of things that are beneficial to themselves, then there will be arguments, confrontation. We have to grab hold of what this group highly values. Do not just think about yourself. But we have to deal with our minds and our heart. That we have to take good care of our words and mouths. It seems that we cannot see, like relationship, our minds, our hearts, we cannot see. We cannot see God. Diligent is uh, the reflection of our heart. Why am I lazy? I want to rest. I'm tired. I don't want to move. And this is the condition of the heart. We have to choose diligent. And this will be reflected from our heart. This is to deal with our heart. For a man who has wisdom, because his heart is being dealt with. He refines his own heart so that his words and his mouth are also refined. Grab hold, grabbing hold of God and grab hold of relationship. May God help us.